This is a CVT transmission and it's a gigantic pile of shit. Car companies are always trying to innovate in different technology and this is one said piece of technology. CVT stands for Continuously Variable Trash Heap. CVT transmissions are shiftless gearboxes. They have no gears because they have an infinite gear ratio that goes forever and ever and ever. In practical application, what that looks like is when you hit your gas pedal, if you mash it to the floor, it would stay at 4,000 RPM and accelerate and continue to accelerate faster and faster and faster with no gear changes in between until you let off the throttle. People hated it. And on top of people hating it, they're terrible transmissions as we found out over the years. Lucky for us, only a few models in our line actually made it. No Volkswagens and only three models of Audis, all A4s, with front wheel drive had the CVT transmission. Now this trans came out of a car that failed. Surprise, surprise, it wasn't working right. It had faults in the transmission and was slipping while it was trying to drive. Now normally, the common problems with CVT transmissions are shuddering under acceleration, which we made a video on doing a re-adaptation on a B7A4 way back in the day. I'm gonna take this transmission apart to see what's inside so you can see what's inside and see if I can figure out why it was slipping. I'll start by taking off this back cover. I'm gonna break this open. I did drain this transmission, but I still intend to make a mess, which is why I have these pig mats on the, on the table. It's kind of unbelievable that it's that bad already. It's a lot too. Look at how much, it's still going. This is a valve body, which is similar to a mech unit, but it's specific to automatic transmissions. There does appear to be some metal inside here. Yeah, take a look. See the kind of floating in there? I wonder, it looks like there's flake underneath here too. To this point, right, he right here, I still know what I'm doing right here. Uh, so here we go. Uh-oh, that's the wrong size, I think. Oh. What are all those bolts? Oh my God. That's what holds the valve body on. Right here, that module controls the valve body. These have all the fluid that goes through all these channels in here. There's gonna be solenoids inside. So we'll take it apart and we'll show you. As you can see, this is the gear selector. You're moving when you're moving your um, selector in your car. This is the valve body, so we're gonna try to open it up. Okay. But I know, I figured I could rotate it like that. Solenoids in here control how the fluid flows through all this stuff. So you can see there's a solenoid over here, there's a solenoid over here, there's one over here, and they'll open and close to allow the paths of fluid to go to where they need to go. All transmissions have this. Well, DSGs don't, but there's a little filter guy, a little screen. See, so yeah, that's pretty neat stuff people who haven't seen it before. That's why I took it apart, because I thought people might like to see inside there. This is actually the pump, but as you spin, this, how, this is how fluid makes pressure, driven by the transmission itself, and then this side of here makes pressure and spits it out into the valve body. I'm gonna start with one that's a little bit of pain, and I did it. Don't worry, there's not a lot of these. There's one. Yeah. Okay, so we're about to crack this case loose. This is gonna make a mess everywhere. Be prepared. It's gonna spill over like a waterfall of disgusting gear oil. It's just gonna all over the edges of this thing. Oh yeah. Oh, remember what I said? Oh my gosh. Remember, remember what I said, people, about the waterfall? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I totally drained this transmission out. Totally a lot. I totally did not at all. I have made an absolute mess now. <laughs> I'm going to get a bunch of pig mat. Here's some pig mat. I'm probably going to eat more than this. This transmission looked pretty drained to you. <laughs> you drained it. I drained it all right. It's all the way drained now. 
I'm really, I'm really upset about this. <laughs> okay, well, let's just keep going since I'm already got trans fluid everywhere. It, by the way, if you're worried about if this, you're supposed to do it like this, you're 100% not supposed to do it like this. <laughs> this is a 100% chance you're not supposed to do it what I, like what I'm doing. Now we're gonna take these, this flange out and fun fact about B8 cars, because this came out of a B8, the transmission was designed so that the weight distribution would be further forward. So that's why the axle runs through the flex plate for the transmission. You shouldn't use this, this kind of hammer on that, but I don't care, because I'm a gangster. I'm not really a gangster. I just don't care if I damage this. With the, oh. As you can see, that's where the axle goes in between right there. We're going to put this in the scrap pile. Oh, jeez. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> I could look at a manual, but I'm not going to. This, is, this isn't a manual. This is a CVT. Struggle. Struggle when you don't have to be a man. Get mad and break things when you don't have to be a man. <laughs> I was trying to mostly just not get a mess all over myself. That was my main goal. There we go. There's one. Got to layer down. Too many clippings. I'm a little scared right now, actually. Like IRL. Okay. Whew. So this is how the magic of continuously variable transmissions work. I mean, it looks pretty cool. It looks, it does look pretty cool. Look at that. You see how that works? This is the chainiest of chain gangs. I got heavy machinery and slippery oil. Not a great combo, guys. Not a great combo. Right now, we're gonna take out this filter to take a look and inspect. I did find a lot of blood in my glove if you wanna take a look there. I don't know how I did that, but bottom, you can see these are magnets. So we can see how full of metal they are. They're really not too bad. Obviously you can see that's all metal. So that's all metal, but experimenting with new tech is always cool. But as we've seen with these transmissions, it can result in less than desirable outcomes. Subaru uses them. I think Honda and Toyota use them some. I don't think anybody's had particularly good results yet. I'm surprised they're still being used at all, frankly. There we go. There we go. Now this, this chain might be something neat to hang on to. Oh, I feel wetness coming out of my, out of this hole. Yes, it went right onto my shirt. The wetness from the hole is dripping in my shirt. Let's see how pot, easy I can pop this guy off. I got pretty easy. There's a planetary gear set inside of there. I think it just says break everything until, until it comes apart. That's is all inside your transmission. Why do cars cost so much money? Look at all this shit. Look at all this. Yeah. Nothing's inside there. It's just an aluminum piece. This is why we took it apart was to see this guy. All right, so how do CVT transmissions work? So this is your band for your CVT transmission. This is your input shaft and this is your output shaft. This is the one that comes from your engine. So it's your input from the engine and then this is your output which goes to your differential which you can see drives right here. So as you would go up in speed to make this thing shift per se, this one would squeeze down and this one would get bigger. And eventually to make the highest speed possible, you'd have this one be the smallest and this one be the biggest. And that would make the ratio something like a higher drive gear, what you would consider to be sixth gear. Starting out, it's gonna be something more like this, where it's gonna be this one's gonna be the smallest, that one's gonna be the biggest. And this would be the equivalent of something like first gear. Obviously you have complete variability when you have these minor adjustments that can make, which gives you infinite gear ratios for this transmission, but it's still infinitely terrible. All those little fingers have a taper to them. I don't know if they wear like that. 
it would make sense because they're riding on this edge here that that's going to happen because they're just going to be constantly like pushed in and out over and over and over again. I mean, you think about it, like your car is being driven by basically this thing squeezing together. It's going based on that, which is why they don't hold torque very well. I don't know what that was, but it was loud. You got it. You believe in me? You can do this. You can do, you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Like that kid said. You, you could, you'll do, you, you want. I'm not really gonna go paping anymore. Now I just gotta pry it out because it's stuck. Inside these shafts, they're gonna have fluid that pushes this open and closed, and that's actually how it achieves that. So let's look inside of here and, and see what that looks like. I've lost my patience in trying to take this apart the right way. I'm now trying to take this apart a way. So here we go. Okay, so as we look inside here, you can see this is where that fluid would have been as we were cutting it. It's sort of leaking out fluid different places. There. And this is gonna be where it's gonna pump fluid into for that particular actuation. And the best way to see that is if you look in here, inside of these shafts are hollow and that's where it pumps the fluid to. And if you look over here inside the transmission, this actually pumps fluid up into this right here, which goes inside the shaft of this. That's where it sits. They could fail a variety of ways. It could be an issue where it's maybe like fluid leaking past seals, so it can't hold enough pressure to actually push down properly. Could be a solenoid inside of the uh, valve body that's a problem. Could be an issue within this module that's a problem. One of these sensors that's an issue, like one of these guys. One of, this, could, this could be a problem. I really did this video because I hate CVT transmissions and I wanted to destroy one.